Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you the top five books that I read this summer. So the layout of this video is going to be, I'm going to go through all the books and their ratings that I read over the months of June, July, and August. And then at the end of the video, I'll talk more in depth out of my top five. So overall, this was a very successful summer uh, for reading. I think I did a really good job. I feel like despite everything going on, I still managed to read a lot. And the summer in particular, I ended up rereading um, a lot as well which is something that I've been trying to do more often and it's really worked out well um, so yeah without further ado let's get started so starting out in June I first read Gone to Darkness by Barbara Nicholas which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by JK Rowling which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars the King of Crows by Libba Ray, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. I Tell You I Love You But Then I'd Have to Kill You by Ali Carter, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Cross My Heart and Hope to Spy by Ali Carter, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Moving on into July, I first read The Splendid in the Vile by Eric Larson, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Don't Judge a Girl by Her Cover by Ali Carter, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Only the Good Spy Young, Out of Sight, Out of Time, and United We Spy All by Ali Carter, and I gave all three of these books a 5 out of 5 stars. And then finally moving on into August, I first read The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And Career of Evil, also by Robert Galbraith, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. So as you can see, overall, it was a very good reading, you know, season. There was a lot of good reads for me. And like I said, a lot of free reads, which I've actually found that I really enjoy and definitely want to incorporate, incorporate incorporate more uh, down the road but I feel like it was just kind of like all over the place in terms of genre uh, which is very good as well I want to kind of become more well-rounded with my reading um, so I feel like I really kind of accomplished that in um, over the summer so starting out the first book that I want to talk about is Gone to Darkness by Barbara Nicholas and this is the fourth book in the Sydney Parnell series and obviously I can't talk too much about this book as it is kind of further into the series but the general premise of this story it follows Sydney who is a former Marine who worked in Afghanistan and now she is working as a kind of like a detective or you know private security for the train systems in Colorado um, and she kind of you know solves crimes and all that and she has what's unique about Sydney is that she has a canine um, sidekick named Clyde and they kind of solve murder mysteries together um, but what I really like about this book is that it really highlights how people coming back from war aren't necessarily like they're trained to go to war but they're not necessarily trained on how to adjust back to civilian life and this book tackles a lot with PTSD dealing with demon seeming people that you love you know die in front of you and I like how this book really highlights it um, as the series progresses I feel like the third book is where we kind of see a deviation from the kind of general kind of formulaic store, um, murders that Sydney goes along and so she's kind of filling a new role in this one which was really neat to see. I loved kind of the new um, relationship she has with her new partner. Um, I did feel a little disconnect from some of the other characters but this book is more focused on Sydney and her adjustment to this new position. Um, it's really creepy too because you do get the narrative of the killer in here which kind of adds another dimension and you know kind of perspective when reading this which is really really creepy and the end was super suspenseful so I definitely love this series if you're looking for a new crime series that's unique I highly recommend you check this series out there's only four books out now so it's easy to be easy to get caught up but nevertheless this book this book series is just amazing next I have the King of Crows by Libba Bray and this is the concluding novels in the Diviner series and I fell in love with the series when it first came out long time ago and the final book finally came out I think it came out towards the either 
tail end of 2019 or early 2020, but I didn't get around to, uh, sorry, didn't get around to reading it until the summer. Although the third book out of the series is my favorite, this one I enjoyed. I felt like it was a good conclusion. I just felt like it was unnecessarily long. Like in particular, there's for like 200 pages, the characters are kind of split up and they have to kind of find each other um, at one location. And I felt like that was just a bit unnecessary and I felt like 200 pages, like literally nothing happened. So I did think this one struggled with a lot of the pacing issues, but nevertheless, I did like seeing how this kind of story concluded, how the storylines for a lot of the characters ended and just kind of tying everything in. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is kind of like a paranormal historical fiction fantasy book I guess you can say so it follows people who are diviners who have some sort of magical capability one person can touch an object and know the history of the person it belonged to one person can walk through dreams one person can heal kind of those start those type of things and what's going on in this world in the roaring 20s is that there's a series of murders taking place that are tied to a man who was once known as the King of Crows and it kind of goes from there. The King of Crows is very much kind of trying to like infiltrate our living world with the dead and it kind of goes off you know from there but <laughs> I'm trying to be as vague as possible because I feel like it's just best to kind of go into these blind um, although I was a little bit nitpicky about some of the things in here I still really applaud how this book integrates a diverse cast of characters from different backgrounds and ethnicities it doesn't shy away from the um, kind of darker side I feel like of the roaring 20s is very much a romanticized era but it kind of talks about the eugenics movement and racism and it draws a lot of parallels to what is going on currently in America and I think that's very important. I know in the second book in like the author's note she talks about kind of tying in the racism and just kind of everything that's going on now with you know what was going on then and how it's very eerily similar when you have like government or the head of government kind of you know not condemning that so it's very interesting if you're looking for a book um book series that's a little bit different this definitely was stepping outside my comfort zone but nevertheless it was a lot of fun i fell in love with a lot of these characters and i'm just very happy that i finally was able to finish this series Next up, I have White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. This is a book that I borrowed from my sister, and I feel like it's a very important read. I think everyone who is white needs to read this. This is a book about racism written by a white person, and it's the target audi audience is for white people and just kind of educating, um, you know, white people on their privilege and just how like in certain scenarios you know we may not be aware of our white privilege and how we like kind of do things that can affect people of color around us that we may not be aware of it was very eye-opening and there were so many things in here that I was just like my goodness like I do that and I don't realize that I did it's very educational I think because it is also written by a white person for white people it kind of highlights some of the you know things that a lot of us don't really think about and I was very much kind of ashamed reading it because it made me realize that um, I have a lot of you know there's a lot of areas that all of us can improve on it was very educational it's very it's written in a way that is very accessible to a lot of people and who haven't really read a lot of books about anti-racism and race. Um, I think it's very important as well. I definitely want to get my own copy of this one day, but I've just been holding off kind of book buying for a while, but I definitely think this is a book that every white person needs to read, especially now when there's been such a big movement for kind of, you know, bringing to light racism in America. I think this is a book everyone needs to read. But this isn't necessarily a single book in particular, it is a series and it is the Galva Girls series by Allie Carter. This is a series that I remember reading in grade grade six, grade seven, and I definitely, this was my equivalent of Harry Potter. I didn't grow up with Harry Potter, I read all the books 
going into grade nine. This was a series that definitely grew up with me. Like I said, the first book came out in 2006, so I was either grade six, grade seven, and the last book came out when I was in my first year of university. So this is definitely a series that I grew up with, and me and my friend ended up rereading this series together <laughs> over the summer, and it was just super fun. It's super nostalgic, and definitely now reading it from an adult perspective gives me a new kind of interesting spin on it and I definitely admire this series more like definitely it highlights a lot of great themes and kind of just being you know you know growing up and having to make those decisions on like what career you want like realizing that your actions have you know impacts on those around you and just kind of having to like officially kind of grow up so like the first two books in here are very much kind of you know fluffy like light and fluffy contemporary ones like there's nothing really too special about these they're kind of just you know like teenage girl falling in love um which like these two are my least favorite actually but once the third book kind of gets it, the third book introduces the overarching like narrative of the series it introduces more dark themes like like i said these two are just kind of like contemporary you know fluffy ya reads but it definitely gets more like adult as the series progresses it introduces more themes like it's more real world i think and i loved it just seeing the characters grow over the course of this novel cami has definitely become one of my favorite literary characters of all time um i knew like it just from the first like page i realized i'm like i knew why <laughs> like now i remember why i admired cami so much when i was younger and this was definitely a good series that aged well, I think. Like, there's some nitpicky things in, like, the first two books, but it kind of, you know, <laughs> fixes them in the third one where it be, kind of gets more, you know, serious. Um, so I definitely loved reading this. I also have a vlog where I'm kind of, <laughs> like, reading these series and just giving you my thoughts and opinions on it. If you want to go and check it out, it's more of just, like, an existential crisis of how bad my memory is. But nevertheless, if you're interested go and check that out but yes this series is near and dear to my heart and lastly I have Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith and this was another reread for me so um, the newest Cormoran Strike series book comes out September 15th and I noticed when I was reading the Lethal White book which was the newest release that came out towards the end of 2018 that there were just a lot of like minor characters and like plot points that I forgot so I was like you know what I'm just going to reread the series <laughs> in preparation for that and this time take notes on just some of the kind of plot points and characters that kind of pop up throughout the series. So um, that was my plan and I was super excited reading Career of Evil because it was my favorite of the series and it helped too because my memory is so bad. Like I remembered who the killer was in the first one because I think it's very like iconic um and just who the killer was but after this one like i totally forgot like even like the silkworm i didn't remember who was the killer this one i vaguely remembered who the killer was but i couldn't pinpoint which character it was and i'm not going to spoil why but um it was just fun this book is super suspenseful my sister and i were talking about this because she loves the series too she was reading this book last year when we were in barcelona and she's like i just couldn't put it down it's super suspenseful and i think it's extra creepy too because we do get the killer's perspective and his kind of narrative narration and thought process and just kind of reading that just adds it like makes it extra creepy and so it was just a lot of fun super suspenseful as I said this is definitely my favorite in the series and just the development and you know progression of Robin and Strike's relationship in here is just like so good I remember this gave me a book hangover if you want to go see the review of it from like this book from a long time ago it's kind of funny to watch but um yeah i just love this book it's just so good it's definitely my favorite of the series and it was well worth the reread because i enjoyed it just as much as i did the first time around so that is always a plus but yeah love this book so much definitely probably one of my favorite books of all time so that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of the books you've read this month were and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys next time bye guys